Hello, this is a video meant to get our class up to speed about using uh, soft proofing and converting then from RGB color to CMYK color. Now to get started, I always like to flatten my image first. Flattening gets away anything that might go problems with your layers or anything like that with color. So first, go ahead and take a minute to flatten your file. So now we're going to start by going to view and we're going to go to Proof Setup and to Custom. Now this brings up a kind of an interesting looking box and it did something strange to my image that I wasn't expecting. Now to understand this a little bit, the device to simulate is you telling Photoshop what profile you want to look at, what profile you are thinking of converting to. And in this case I have US web coded SWOPV2. Now, there are tons of these, but I know everybody who has Photoshop has web coded SWOP. It's also a preset in the color management settings of Photoshop and the Adobe Suite. The nice thing about it is that it's stable, it doesn't change too much when you convert to blur color settings or anything else, from what I can understand. So I think US web coded is the best way to go. Now taking another look further down the line, we have rendering intent. Where rendering intent is, it's how you're telling Photoshop to fit colors into different color spaces. RGB color is projected and it's huge compared to print CM, uh, or CMYK color. So in order to get our colors correct, we need to tell Photoshop how we want those colors to come together into that smaller space. Perceptual goes ahead and takes that space and fits it all together nice and neat. But in order to do that, it moves colors around to make everything fit. So what it's doing is it's actually moving stuff around to keep your color harmonies and color perception or perception, you know, perceptual together. So that's one way to look at it but we can also look at relative color metric. Relative color metric made a different change. What relative color metric does is it simply takes colors that are outside of the printable gamut or color space and moves them to the nearest printable color. Now sometimes this can cause banding which is why you don't always want to use it but a lot of the times relative color metric works great for photographs photographic imagery, almost anything painted or needing smooth transition with color that you don't really need to worry about shifting around too much. But if it doesn't look right, try perceptual. And if perceptual doesn't work right, or doesn't look right, you can change it to relative color metric. Now say you like one rendering intent, and you want to just tweak it a little bit, make it a little different, but you still want to be able to look at the changes you're making. Well, in that case, we're going to click OK. And before I leave this box, we always want to make sure we have checked black point compensation. If not, then your colors can become funky, and sometimes your prints will come out too light. So we're going to click OK, and here we are. US Web Coded SWOP V2. That's our proof setup. But if you can look all the way over here, we're still actually an RGB image. We're only looking at it through goggles that show us US web coded. So it's a, like a way of looking through some glasses that's narrowing some stuff down for us. Now say we want to brighten some stuff up. Maybe this got a little too dark for what we wanted. So we simply come over and you can make this adjustment however you want. I just like curves. And we can go just bump it up a little bit. There we go. So good as new, right? Eh, it's okay, as long as you're satisfied with your image. So, right now I think I'm done, so I'm going to go ahead and convert to profile. And to do that, we simply go to Edit, Convert to Profile. Now, looking at this, this brings up a new box, but the cool thing is, it left that profile you were looking at in this box in the destination space. Source space is the source is the space you are already in 
you don't really have to worry about this one because it's the simply the RGB or any sort of color profile you're already working in on your image and we're just going to convert it finally to destination so using this one of course is going to give us everyone's images are going to look the same when they get put into InDesign so now we're going to these things at the bottom Adobe Engine and Relative Color Metric of course leave Adobe as, as is but you can still change your rendering intent if you wish to perceptual or relative a lot of the times, saturation or absolute are really not what you want. If you have questions more about them, feel free to message me or talk to me in class, and I can explain a little bit more about what these color intents are. Now we want to leave checked black one compensation, and we want to flatten to preserve appearance, because we don't want anything going strange during the conversion. So we're just going to go OK. and then we're already done. So now we just need to save as because we want to save over our original. So we're going to save as and I'm going to save it to my desktop and my file is just too big for any sort of other thing besides the Photoshop or TIFF file. But an important thing to look at here is you want to always embed the color profile. If you don't you can get some things when people, other people open up your image in Photoshop Illustrator or in design sometimes things can go funky and your colors won't look right and your images will look horrible it's not to say that you didn't make a good image it's just the color profile didn't match and it looks it will look pretty bad so by embedding color profile you make sure that everyone else is able to open up your file and look at it exactly the way you look at it so then we'll go and click save but I'll let you guys click save just because it's going to take a little while to write mine. So that's about it for Photoshop. Illustrator is a little more in depth, but uh, go and click the link just after this one to see how to convert and embed profiles in Illustrator. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me at any time. Thank you.